And welcome to Sanford Flip Math. We are finishing up the chapter from the Demana Waits Foley Kennedy Precalculus book, uh, fourth or fifth edition, depending on uh, which one you were issued. Uh, we are finishing up chapter three, which is about exponential growth, uh, along with logarithms and uh, a little bit of logistic growth. And a topic that is really, really the, at the heart of all of this is financial stuff. So uh, put some money in the bank, leave it there, um, buy a car, uh, you owe the bank money perhaps, and then you have to pay it back, and all the while that money that you owe them is earning interest not for you but for the bank, so you end up paying interest uh, in, in similar kinds of situations. So we're going to work through really four basic formulas, uh, or ba I should say basically four formulas. Two of them are pretty straightforward, two of them are downright ugly. Uh, this lesson is going to focus on compound interest, which are the easier of the formulas. And uh, just kind of to make a little connection here, compound interest, uh, much like uh, exponential growth that we saw before, uh, deals with uh, a single starting value, in this case uh, some kind of a deposit, perhaps, that earn in, earns interest. And then, so for instance, if it's earning, let's say, 3% interest, it sits there for a year, and then that second year it's going to earn interest on the interest. So you're going to make 3% on the initial deposit plus the interest you had earned. And on the third year, you make interest on your interest, on your interest, and et cetera. So the growth depends not just on what you initially put in, but the growth depends on the amount of money in that account, including interest at any given time. This is not the same thing as simple interest, which doesn't ever earn interest on interest. So compound interest is a little more exciting. Uh, you make a little bit more money. Uh, if you have a lot of money and a lot of time, you can make a lot more money. If you have a little bit of money and a lot of time, you percentage-wise, you make a lot more money. Okay, And the distinction is going to be between that and an annuity, which is either a regular deposit or withdrawal. So, uh, for instance, I'm saving up for a rainy day. It's not really raining outside right now, but the ground is wet. But I'm saving up for a rainy day, so I'm deciding to put away $100 a month for the next three years. So I put, money in the, I put $100 in the bank. It earns interest. I, the next month I put $100 in the bank, it earns interest along with the other $100 I put in. And the, the problem is, is that each payment I put in earns interest for a different amount of time, so it makes the formula a little more complicated. All right, so having said that, we're going to focus in on uh, compound interest, which uh, how many deposits or withdrawals? One. So that's going to make it compound interest, and then we have another decision to make. Okay, so let's... Let's, so I've grabbed a piece of that, that little flow chart. Okay, so here's my one payment. Uh, so one deposit, and so therefore I'm doing compound interest. And then how many pay compoundings per year? And that's going to be this formula. Okay, now let me just take a minute before we start uh, doing this problem and remind you that we've already seen a formula that looks kind of like this. And this is when we're talking about percent growth, or sometimes percent decay. And really, this is just a special case of the formula that we're going to work with right now. And the distinction is, is that notice there's no K in this one. And, and that's just because the K in this one is 1. So in other words, 1 compounding per year. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of build that formula up a little bit and, and uh, use it, be able to use it for more than one thing. Okay? So same idea. Now <clears throat> what, what we're saying is, well, let me tell you, let's just start with the example. Okay? All right, so here we go. We're just going to fill in values. Okay, now worth, worth noting that the 1500 bucks that's our starting amount, our initial value, and our initial value is that number out in front. Okay, so that's going to be the P. Uh, five years is the T. Okay, so that's T. Okay, and 3% interest, the interest rate as a decimal will then be 0 0.03. And then the last thing that we don't know, and that's the thing that's changing, 
is the K. So for this one, K is once a year. Quarterly, well, K is four times a year. How many months in a year? So that's 12 times a year. How many days in a year? We're going to assume it is not a leap year. And continuously, K is infinite. Now that's tricky, and that's, that's going to get us a different formula. All right, so let's focus on K equals 1. So A equals P times 1 plus R over 1 to the 1 times 5. That's not 1.5, that's 1 times 5. Okay, I'm going to do a little calculation. Okay, and I know that some of you are saying, okay, why am I doing the 1? Well, I just wanted to make sure I'm filling in all the values on the, on the formula. Okay, so I've typed this in now into my calculator. Just be careful how you type it in. You need to type it in, too, to make sure that uh, you are getting the same answer that I'm getting. Okay, so don't just trust me. Uh, I mean, I think I did it right, but my, my issue is that I, you need to know how to type this in. Okay. All right, same song, second verse. We're going to do another one of these. And here's the idea. Quarterly, so we put in $1,500, 1 plus, same numbers, 3% interest. The only difference is now it's 4 times a year, and to the 4 times 5. Okay, now I'm going to type this in, instead of as 4 times 5, I'm just going to type in 20. But just know it came from 4 times 5. Okay, so... Uh, we're just, we're just typing, and instead of a 1 now, it's a 4. And the bell just rang. Okay, so let me write this down, in, and I'm about to have students in here. So, uh, 1741, 70, 77, 6, uh, sorry, 1741. Let me uh, fix that. Okay, and a little highlighting, and that's a little hard to see, but it makes sense that it's green because it is money, okay? Okay, so let's do this again. Uh, this time we're going to do this for monthly. Now, before I get too far into this, let, rem let me remind you what the goal is. We are trying to find out how much money is going to be in this account at the end of five years. So we, if we compound the interest once in that year, Okay, so that was going back to the original one that we did up here in Part A, once in a year. Then the amount of money at the end of the year is this 1738.91. Okay, now if it turns out <coughs> that if I compound this quarterly, then I have a little bit more money. Now here's the idea. What this means is, I go through a fourth of the year, I stop, I calculate how much interest is in the account, put that interest into the account. And then I recalculate the interest uh, for the next quarter of the year, three months, whatever, quarter of a year. Uh, and, and I do that. It's like I stop four times during the year, compute interest, put it in, and then I'm earning interest on my interest more quickly. So I'm making more money because I'm earning interest on interest more quickly, more often. Okay? So let's do the same idea, only for monthly. So A equals 1,500. One plus, and it, it, we're following the same format. And the only thing that's changing is the amount of times I'm compounding per year. Okay, so this time uh, I type, 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 and this time it is just a smidge more. Okay, it is uh, 1742.75. Okay, so it is more. Every time you increase the amount of compounding, it does give you more money. It's just how much more? That, that's the question, okay? <coughs> Excuse me, we're going to do this two more times. So daily, again, follows the same kind of format. Uh, the only difference is it's 365 times in a year. Okay, so here we go. Over 365. 365 times 5. Again, the 5 is the number of years. Okay, so type, type, type. This time it's 1742 and 70, oh, I looked at the wrong one last time, sorry, and 75 cents. Sorry, this was uh, 43 cents back here. Sorry, a little, uh, uh, looked at the calculator in the wrong spot. Okay, sorry about that. Please adjust, do not adjust your television set, no. Okay, we got one more to go, and the idea now is what if we 
we're able to stop compute interest, put it in the account an infinite number of times in a year. So if I tried to follow the same formula, it would look like this, and I'm very curious to see how we were going to type this one in. Well, you really can't. So this is where the other formula comes in. Okay, so if it says it is compounded continuously, then we use a whole different formula. It's not that one. It's really A equals, I mean, that's the idea of it. Now, so people say PERT. The only problem with PERT is you need to know where the R and the T go. Okay, but the rest of it follows the same format. Okay, so it was $1,500 times E. Now, I don't know if you remember what E really means. It comes from this setup right here with infinity in there. So E to the R, R is the interest rate as a decimal, and T is time. Typically, it is in years because the interest rates are quoted annually. Okay? So then we just type, type, type. Remember that the 0.03 times, point, uh, times 5, rather, it needs to all be in the exponent, so it's really 0.15. And when all is said and done, oh, now see, I'm just annoyed now. That was 74. This one is 1742.75. Just a one penny more than the last one. Sorry. Had a righto followed by a righto. All right. Okay, so let's just pop back to, uh, or I'm going to go to the next slide. You, 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 can, you can come back here at your leisure as much as you want. Uh, I'm going to the next slide. Just a quick reminder. We're talking about one deposit. Do we have a number for the number of times it's compounded per year? If so, then it's this one. If we don't have a number, if it says it's compounded continuously, then you follow this one. Okay? That's it. Okay. Now, usually, it's very common where they say, this is how much money we're going to put in, put with this interest rate, and this amount of time, and this amount of compoundings. And you just plug, 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 and you don't have to solve for anything. You just calculate. Okay? This problem is a little different. This one's a little backwards. Instead, it's saying, how long until the money doubles? Okay, so in other words, we have an account earning 5% interest compounded quarterly. Okay, well, so in other words, I'm going to put in, I, they don't even tell me how much money to put in. Okay, so th this is the, the formula that we're going to use. Okay, and what it says is, we're going to double our money. Well, I don't know how much to put in, so what I'm going to do is just double the P. So in other words, I'm going to write 2P here. Now, don't freak out on me. The whole idea is we're just doubling the amount of money we have. Okay? It says 5% interest. Okay, so I'm just going to start filling stuff in. So 0 0.05. It's compounded quarterly. And the problem is we don't know what time it is. We don't know how much time because they say when. That's that's what their question is. Okay? I think I'm going to need a little more room. Okay? So this is the setup. I'm going to go one more step, 2P equals P times 1 plus, well, 0 0.05 divided by 4. I need to know what that is. 0 0.05 divided by 4, 0.0125 to the 4T. Okay, and I'm going to, well, let me write it one more time again, sorry. So that's a 1, 2, 5 to the 4T. Oh, that was, that was amusing. Okay, so now I need to solve for T. This is now a problem like what we just did in, in the last little unit. Well, first of all, I'm going to divide by P. We didn't have that happen the last unit. But now it is. Parentheses really don't need to be there. It just helps me to picture what's going on here. Okay? All right, so what I want to do, that's funny, I did it again. I'm just trying to grab that and slide it down. Okay, um, I'm going to take the log of both sides. When you are trying to get at a variable that's in the exponent, that's what you do. Okay, so log of 2 equals, I'm going to use that property of logs where I can pull that out in front. Okay. 
Okay, and then now I'm going to divide both sides. I'm going to divide by 4. And I'm also going to divide by the log of whatever this number is. Okay, so this is a bunch of stuff to type in. Okay, probably worth noting that you need to make sure all of this is in the denominator. So I'm, when I type that in, I'm going to use uh, parentheses. Okay, and that is equal to 13.94. So 13.949 years. Okay, the interest rates are generally given in percent per year. So in other words, it's going to take almost 14 years for this money to double. So if I put $1 in to this account and leave it for 14 years, I'm going to have $2. That doesn't sound exciting. Okay, what if I put a million dollars into this account, left it for 14 years, now it's $2 million. Sounds much better, doesn't it? But it, the idea is no matter how much money I put in, it's going to double. Okay, I want to do the same exact problem, only this time it's compounded continuously. Okay, so again, same idea. I'm going to start with P dollars. I'm go I want it to double. E to the interest rate is 0 0.05, and I'm solving for T. That's the only thing I don't know except for the amount of money that I start with, and honestly, the P's are just going to divide out. It doesn't matter how much money. The time is still going to be the same. Okay, so I'm going to take the log of both sides. Now, this time, I'm going to do natural log because it's base E, and so this ends up natural log of 2 equals natural log of E to a power is just that power, and all I need to do is divide by 0 0.05, so this one actually feels a little bit easier. Okay, so I've got to do a little type. Okay, so that is 13.8629. So 13 point, if we go three decimal places, 863 years. So still almost 14 years, just a little bit quicker because of the extra compoundings. All right, we really have more to do with this, but we're going to leave it at that. I, I'm, I don't want to push this. Uh, uh, we did a lot already. Now, so just a reminder that we're talking about two separate formulas. The only difference is when it's compounded continuously, you use the E for all other compoundings. Uh, you use P times 1 plus R over K to the KT. Okay, quick note. Um, you should know these. Now, in class we'll talk about how this uh, section is going to be evaluated, so it'll be a little bit different, uh, but understand that, you know, in, in the future, as you go into other situations, it, it really, these formulas are really important, so you, you really do need to be able to work with them. Okay, well, thanks. We're going to call it good, and uh, we'll see you again on Sanford Flip Math. Bye.